Can every book just have like in parentheses like, hey Audrey, this one's got murder. That was also sort of, not like a, so Angie is, Angie. Angie is totally crushed. Mm, I just love it. You know, anything, all things Boston is a bug, buzzword for me, bug word for me. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to, I can't even believe it, but another month of what's coming out this month. And this time we're talking about June. How was it June? How did we blink and go from January to June? I don't even know. But I also feel like, slash no, I have been waiting all year for the month of June because it's when Riley Sager's new book comes out. But on top of that, there are so many other amazing books that are coming out this month. There's a pre-order of mine in there. There's some books that I don't even think I've talked about yet, but let's just dive into a smattering, as always, of the books I'm really excited about coming out in the month of June. Starting off with June 7th. The first book is The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentil. And this is set in the Boston Public Library. And if you guys know anything about me, you know anything in around Boston is a buzzword for me. I almost like tripped over those words. In fact, I totally tripped over those words, but I love Boston because I used to live there. So this one says in every person's story, there is something to hide. It's been a minute since I filmed you guys. The ornate reading room at the Boston Public Library is quiet until the tranquility is shattered by a woman's terrified scream. Security guards take charge immediately, instructing everyone inside to stay put until the threat is identified and contained. While they wait for the all clear, four strangers who happen to sit at the same table pass the time in conversation and friendships are struck. Each one has his or her own reasons for being in the reading room that morning. It just happens that one is a murderer. You guys. Sharp, thrilling read, unexpected, twisty literary adventure that examines the complicated nature of friendship and shows us that words can be the most treacherous weapons of all. Now, I will admit, this is one of these books where I saw the title and I was like, oh, literary fiction, not usually my jam. Boston, hmm, read the description on it and I was like, oh my God, this is like murder. <laughs> like, can every book just have like in parentheses like, hey Audrey, this one's got murder. So I know that I'm not gonna miss anything really amazing, but first book I have and I'm really, really excited to check it out. The next book I have is a nonfiction book by JC Dupree and this is called Liking Myself Back, An Influencer's Journey from Self-Doubt to Self-Acceptance. So I have been following JC for a really long time. So she operates as Damsel in Dior. She has a website, she's got an Instagram page. And like I said, I've been following her for a really long time since like early days I stumbled upon her. And she used to work at E, so much history, with Kat Sadler. I wanna say she was like Kat Sadler's EA. And then she wound up sort of like branching off and this was like an early blogger days. And I've just followed her journey the entire time. And I really enjoy her authenticity, I love her style. I just, her website style, her Instagram style, but also like her fashion sense. And I've just really enjoyed following her journey and her and her husband like renovated their house and they would vlog about things. And she's been super transparent about her pregnancy and her struggles with fertility and her struggles with mental health. And she's a photographer and she writes, obviously we've got a book finally, but I really just enjoy her I say like as a person, like obviously I don't know her, but I've enjoyed her journey. So I was really curious about this. And this was actually supposed to come out in May. I talked about it in my May video when I was editing and double checking dates. I realized the date got bumped to June 7th. So here we are now. But she is just, I find like relatable and just has created such a great career for herself. And then I was looking at her Instagram the other day and she has a clip of her reading part of the book and she talks about when her and her husband were separated, which I didn't even know. And part of it was how she was saying like how, you know, kept such a facade up of like everything being perfect and everything being fine and not talking about it publicly and just sort of the pressures of being an influencer and the struggles of that and being an entrepreneur. And I just, like I said, find it very interesting. So I'm very excited for this book. I'm really curious to hear some more of her story because I do feel like there has been a lot of transparency throughout her career and obviously this delves in deeper and she's gonna talk about more things as well. So really interested in it and I just think she's great. So it's on the list. 
Next up, let's talk about June 14th. The next book is Can't Look Away by Carol Lovering. So I talked about this in my NetGalley video from a while ago, and I am horrified to say I have not read this yet, but I will be reading this, and it comes out this month, so everybody gets to read it. So she wrote Tell Me Lies, she wrote Too Good to Be True, and this one is a sexy suspense novel about the kind of addictive, obsessive love that keeps you coming back no matter how many times you try to look away. Ding, 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 hence the title. So in this one, in 2013, 23-year-old Molly Diamond is a barista dreaming of becoming a writer. Also a buzzword for me. Writer, not barista. <laughs> one night at a concert in East Williamsburg, she locks eyes with the lead singer, Jake Danner, and can't look away. Molly and Jake fall quickly and deeply in love, especially after he writes a hit song about her that puts his band on the map. So now we fast forward about 10 years and Molly has given up writing and is living in Connecticut with her young daughter and her husband, Hunter, who is decidedly not Jake Danner. Their life looks picture, their life looks picture perfect, but Molly is lonely. She feels out of place with the other women in their wealthy suburb and she's struggling to conceive their second child. When Sabrina, a newcomer in town, walks into the yoga studio where Molly teaches and confesses her own fertility struggles, Molly believes she's finally found a friend. But Sabrina has her own reasons for moving to Connecticut and befriending Molly. And as Sabrina's secrets are slowly unspooled, her connection to Molly becomes clearer, as do secrets of Molly's own, which she's worked very hard to keep buried. Meanwhile, a new version of Jake's song is on the radio, forcing Molly to confront her past and ask the ultimate questions. You guys, themes here, right? What happens when life turns out nothing like we thought it would when we're young and dreaming big? Does growing up mean choosing with your head rather than your heart? And do we ever truly get over our first love? So this definitely reminds me in like similar but different ways of Love the One You're With by Emily Giffen. And in that one, sort of a very similar thing. It's like the one that got away and many, many years later she runs into him and it becomes the question of like, who do you love? Love the one you're with go back to the old guy, what do you do, what do you do? But I'm very excited for this one and I will keep you guys posted what I think of it when I read it, but it just sounds really good. It just sounds really good. I think it's like between like the rock star writer whole part of it, I don't know. It's just, it's like striking all the chords for me. The next book is Flying Solo by Linda Holmes. So she wrote Evie Drake Starts Over, which I read a few years ago and absolutely loved. And if you guys have been here for a long time and have a really good memory, you might remember me saying that I picked that book up solely on the recommendation of Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I absolutely loved it. So I am very excited to read more Linda Holmes. And this is another book set in Maine. And this one has a bit of like a mystery caper effect to it, which intrigues me even more. So I'm very excited about it. So in this one, we have a woman named Lori and she is smarting from her recently canceled wedding and about to turn 40. And she winds up returning to her hometown to handle the estate of her great aunt Dot, a spirited, a spirited adventurer who lived to be 90. It says alongside with boxes of Polaroids and pottery, a mysterious wooden duck shows up at the bottom of a cedar chest. Lori's curiosity is piqued, especially after she finds a love letter to the never married Dot that ends with the line, quote, and anyway, if you're ever desperate, there are always ducks, darling. Lori is told that the duck has no financial value, but after it disappears under suspicious circumstances, she feels compelled to figure out why anyone would steal a wooden duck and why Dot kept it hidden away in the first place. So this is where Lori gets swept up in the caper of it all, and it says she finds herself negotiating with antiques dealers and con artists going on after hours dates at the local library and reconnecting with her oldest friend and first love. Desperate to uncover her great aunt's secrets, Lori must reckon with her past, her future, and ultimately embrace her own vision of flying solo. So like I said, I loved Ebby Drake and that was a similar story in the sense of it was a woman who was starting over and that one her husband had died and she was sort of reckoning with her past in that one as well and figuring out her future and what was next for her. And I just loved the characters and I loved the writing and I'm just so excited for this. And I fell in love with the setting in Maine. It was super atmospheric in that sense, not like in a creepy, dark Rebecca kind of an atmospheric way, but it just, you could like feel like you were in Maine and it just all the vibes of it all. So again, I'm really excited about this. And the fact that it has a little bit of like a mystery caper effect to it, which I didn't know and Evie Drake didn't have, makes me even more excited. 
the day I'm so excited about, June 21st. Okay, obviously I'm gonna talk about The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager first. So I know I've talked about it a bunch of times and I know you guys are like, we know this book is coming out, stop talking about it, but one more time for the people in the back. Riley Sager's new book comes out, The House Across the Lake. I was so, so, so lucky to get an arc of it through NetGalley, which I'm so jazzed about, and I really enjoyed this book so much. So I talked about it a lot in the vlog. I talked about it in my April wrap up. I will link it all down below, but long story short, I always like to go in a little bit blind to the thrillers, but this is Rear Window on a Lake in Vermont. And it is what you would expect from Riley Sager in that he sort of gives you what you think you're getting, but then turns it on you. And I definitely will say that he has done something that he's never done before in this book and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. I was hooked, I was into it. So this is about a woman named Casey Fletcher. She is an actress who is recently widowed, very recently in the middle of a terrible publicity scandal, just sort of all things have gone downhill for her. So her mother, who was also a very famous actress, is like, go to the family lake house in Vermont, get out of New York City, get out of the media, and get it together, girl. And Casey is armed with, I want to say it says binoculars and bourbon. And she sits on her back porch and she watches the neighbors across the lake. So she is up there in October, so it's off season, so there's not a lot of people around. But the fancy, fabulous couple across the lake who have bought that house are there. So she meets Catherine, who is a model and who almost drowns in the lake one day and Casey saves her and they become fast friends and then Catherine goes missing and of course her husband is the number one suspect. So I really enjoyed this book so much. I was here for it. I just, I love what he does all the time and finally I'm gonna have a physical copy in my hands when that pre-order shows up and I just can't wait. I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. The next book I have is The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. So if you guys saw my book recommendation video of what to read while you're waiting for new releases to come out, I talked about The Last Flight, which Julie Clark wrote, and that came out in 2020, and I loved it. And this is her first book since then, so I'm so excited to dive into it. So this one says, she's back. Meg Williams, Maggie Littleton, Melody Wilde. Different names for the same person, depending on the town, depending on the job. She's a con artist who erases herself to become whoever you need her to be. She's a college student, a life coach, a real estate agent, but nothing about her is real. She slides alongside you and tells you exactly what you need to hear, and by the time she's done, you've likely lost everything. Kat Roberts has been waiting 10 years for the woman who has upended her life to return. And now that she has, Kat is determined to be the one to expose her. But as the two women grow closer, Kat's long held assumptions begin to crumble, leading Kat to wonder who Meg's true target is. So it says, this is about two women, their unwavering quest to seek justice for the past and rewrite the future. So the last flight was also about two different women coming from two totally different places with different motivations and we followed both of their POVs. So I'm assuming, which I know is a mistake, but that we're gonna get multiple points of view in this one. And I'm just really excited for it. I ripped through the last flight and I have no doubt that this is gonna just be another great twisty story with great characters in it. And it's almost here, so I'm super psyched. The next book is In the Dark We Forget by Sandra S.G. Wong. And this is psychological suspense and it says it's about missing parents, a winning lottery ticket, and the lies we tell ourselves in order to survive. Some things are better left forgotten. When a woman wakes up with amnesia beside a mountain highway, confused and alone, she fights to regain her identity only to learn that her parents have disappeared not long after her mother bought a winning $47 million lottery ticket. As her memories painfully resurface and the police uncover details of her parents' mysterious disappearance, Cleo Lee finds herself under increasing suspicion. Even with the unwavering support of her brother, she can't quite reconcile her fears with reality or keep the harrowing nightmare at bay. As Cleo delves deeper for the truth, she cannot escape the nagging sense that maybe the person she should be afraid of is herself. With jolting revelations and taut ambiguity, In the Dark We Forget vividly examines the complexities of family and the lies we tell ourselves in order to survive, which I already said at the beginning, but I'm reading it off of Goodreads, so bear with me. But again, this is also giving me like In a Dark Dark Wood vibes with 
the memory loss and waking up and like trying to piece together what happened and wondering if you are actually the person who like did the thing. So I'm really interested. I have never read anything by Sandra S.G. Wong before, but this one, I will fully admit the title grabbed me and then the cover grabbed me and I was like, this looks like it's gonna be a dark, creepy thriller. And then I read the blurb and I was like, yep. So it's on the list. The next book is On Rotation and this is by Shirlene Obubi. And this is about family, friendship, and finding your way in life and in love. So in this one, we follow a woman named Angie, and it says she's the epitome of the perfect immigrant daughter. She's got it all. Medical school credentials, a handsome lawyer boyfriend, and ride or die friends. But what happens when everything falls apart? So her boyfriend dumps her, she bombs the most important exam of her medical career, and her closest confidant and roommate pulls away, telling Angie that she's more wrapped up in herself than in her friends. So Angie is totally crushed and it says she's always faced her problems by working twice as hard to get half as far. And until now that's done well for her. But when did life get so complicated? And suddenly she begins to question everything, her career, her friendships, even why she's so attracted to men who don't love her as much as she loves them. And just when things couldn't get more confusing, here comes the bad boy, enter Ricky, brilliant, thoughtful, sexy, but who has waist man practically tattooed across his forehead. For someone who's always been in control, Angie realizes that there's one thing she can't plan on, matters of the heart. So this definitely is giving me like those great, again, I feel like I've talked about this before. I love these stories about people who are starting over, like clean slate, even like everything falls apart, but then you get a chance to maybe be where you're supposed to be or start fresh or go down a path you never knew was there in the first place. You start to question everything. I just love books with this kind of a storyline in it. And this one just looks super fun. And of course the obvious med school cover of it all is giving me Grey's Anatomy vibes for absolutely no reason, but I am optimistic that maybe there'll be some like Grey's type soap opera-y romances and such going on, but looks very good. The next book is another pre-order of mine, and this is The Bay by Allie Reynolds. So this actually comes out in June in the UK and Australia as The Bay, and then it will come out in the US in July as The Swell. I know, I was confused too. I will link the dates down below so you guys have all the information, but because I completely fell in love with Shiver when I read it earlier this year and I'm obsessed with whatever Allie Reynolds says next, I wound up doing the order in the UK because it comes out sooner there and I just absolutely want to have it and read it so I'm very excited for it but same book different title but in this one we have a woman named Kenna and it says she arrives in Sydney to surprise her best friend but Mickey and her fiance Jack are about to head away on a trip so Kenna finds herself tagging along for the ride and they go to this place called Sorrow Bay and it says it's beautiful wild and dangerous a remote surfing spot with waves to die for cut off from the rest of the world here, Kenna meets a mysterious group of people who will do anything to keep their paradise a secret. Sky, Ryan, Clemente, and Victor have come to disappear from life, but what did they leave behind? As Kenna gets drawn into their world, she sees the extremes they are prepared to go to for the next thrill. And everyone seems to be hiding something. Those are like my magic buzzwords. Everyone's hiding something. Everyone has a secret. So what is her best friend involved in and can she get her away? Because one thing is becoming rapidly clear about the bay. Nobody ever leaves. You guys know, again, if you've been here for a minute or two, that I was obsessed with Shiver. The characters in that book, the writing in that book, that was one of those, like I ripped through that book as well and I just absolutely loved it. And I'm so excited to read this one too. So Shiver, they were skiers, uh, snowboarders, sorry, on a mountain. This one we've got surfers. So I just think it's gonna be like action packed, great characters. I'm expecting all sorts of like dark messed up goodness. And I'm gonna be stalking my shipping notification from Book Depository for it to get here. And finally, June 28th. And then I have One of the Girls by Lucy Clark. So this book was originally supposed to come out in May also. And like I talked about it and then I was editing the video and I realized the date got bumped till June because dates just keep popping all over the place. So this is another psychological thriller and this is a bachelorette trip on a stunning Greek island that ends in murder. So it obviously goes horribly, horribly wrong. And again, if you guys have been here for a minute and watched me, I wanna say it's also that same video I talked about 
Julie Clarkin. I'm trying not to mince my authors here. I talked about In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware as one of my favorite of her books. It's actually my favorite of her books, not one of. And that is also a Bachelorette Party Gone Totally Wrong. So I just love that as a starting point for a book. So in this one, we have six very different women travel to a sun-soaked Greek island for the Bachelorette trip to celebrate Lexi's upcoming wedding. From the glorious ocean views to the quaint tavernas and whitewashed streets. I hope I said that right. The vacation seems too good to be true, but dangerous undercurrents run beneath the sunset swims and midnight cocktails because each of the women is hiding a secret. Of course she is. Someone is determined to make sure that Lexi's marriage never happens and that one of them doesn't leave the island alive. So <laughs> the thriller examines the choice of female friendship as well as the deadly consequences when a relationship goes wrong. So again, I just love these books about vacations gone wrong. I love just like a messed up bachelorette party because you always like get like random people who like we're kind of friends, maybe we're not friends anymore. You've got different circles coming together. Anyway, somebody's gonna get murdered and I am a thousand percent here for it. And I feel like also what a perfect summertime book because you've got sort of vacationist, vacation-ish vibes, Greek islands, water, sun. I, I just feel like the atmosphere of it all is just all there and at the risk of being super cheesy, but here it is, I'm all here for it. So there you go, one of the girls. So that's gonna do it for what is coming out in June that I am super jazzed about. And I know as always, as soon as I finish this video, I'm gonna come across something else that's coming out. So let me know what is coming out this month that I have missed, that you're most excited about, that you think I might be excited about. And of course, I will keep you guys posted as I read books and as my pre-order comes in. And I just feel like it's like the beginning of like another great season of great books. And to date, there've been so many amazing ones coming out, but definitely June, July, August, you guys are like bursting. And like off the top of my head, I'm like, mm, and then like, the third in the Beartown series comes out in September. Like it's just, I'm not mad about it, but it's like a never ending amazingness of great books coming our way. So I will catch up with you guys with new releases in July as we get closer to July. But until then, thanks for hanging out today. Thanks for being here. And I will see you guys in another video about other bookish types of things when it comes out. So until then, <laughs> bye everybody.